Yeah, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Hey, um, really good. I uh, had an opportunity to have uh, another play in the shack um, with these um, or with the the bandpass filter, which I'm just debating on use one or two on the radio. Um, this particular one here, just taking some guidance out of the SSDRA, the solid state design for the radio amateur. Uh, there's an appendix at the back which uh, talks about um, these Butterworth W terminated two pole um, filters, which is what I've got down here. Um, that particular filter there, um, let me just go through the circuit first and then we'll have a look at um, sort of the playing around I did to, to, to tweak it to get to where I want it to be. So, that should be in focus, let me just probably come back here a little bit. So the raw filter, um, which has minus 3 dB points between 3.7, say again 3.5 and 3.7 megs, um, is what we see here. Um, this particular configuration is set up for 50 ohms on the input and the output. Uh, coupling capacitor coming in, 83.4 picofarads on either side. Uh, in between the two tuned circuits is 8.8 picofarads. Uh, and then in parallel with the inductors is 131.8 picofarads. Um, the inductors themselves um, are T68-2, the, the red core um, uh, cores there, with 38 turns of uh, number 24. So that was the uh, the raw um, filter I started with, and what I wanted to do was have a bit of a tweak with that. Um, and what I wanted to get was the the minus three b the minus three dB points to be roughly three point six to three point nine. So that was my aiming point uh, with playing around with that starting configuration up here. So I did that by um, right or wrong. I did that by um, replacing those two. If I can maybe get both and picture there, by replacing the uh, two capacitors uh, leading into the filter at each end with just stock uh, standard values, uh, didn't try and get cute to, to come up with a, you know, a series and parallel combination to get close to that, just went with the uh, 82 picofarads as the, as the closest standard value. Uh, for the capacitor in the middle, I'm just using a, um, I'm just using three in the end, uh, uh, trim capacitors. Uh, this little one here tunes or has a capacitance range of 4 to 40 picofarads. And then in parallel with the inductors, exactly the same inductors there, I've got again that 4 to 40 picofarads in parallel with the fixed capacitor. Um, and as we'll see on the screen, the final configuration, which I'm pretty happy with, turned out to be on this particular side here, given uh, the slight variances in the inductor here, uh, 82 picofarads. And on the right hand side it turned out to be 100 picofarads, gave me uh, what I basically um, was after. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all really. So uh, let me just zoom on back. In fact, let's just zoom up here first, have a quick look, and then I'll uh, bring up the screen and we'll have a look there. So nothing too much to see there. You can see the two coupling capacitors coming in. We've got the parallel capacitor fixed uh, in parallel with the inductor and then the two parallel uh, trim pots, so again trim capacitors and that coupling capacitor there. So let me just zoom back out again and let me just go up to here. So I'm still learning how to use this, let me get the reflection out of the way. So I think for this particular setup it's probably not too far off. So um, I'm using the the tracking generator on the SIG gen to sweep between um, uh, where's my where's my sweep? Gosh, ah, let me go back to tracking generator. Yeah, so sweeping from three point no center three point five. I'm sweeping from one megahertz through to five megahertz. Apologies for the uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, not being very decisive there, but again, I'm sort of still learning how to how to use this thing. Um, let me turn that on there. Uh, I've normalised the, uh, the the cabling so to to, to reduce any of the uh, the losses uh, to basically bring that that line up to um, if it was going directly straight through uh, with not the filter up to that zero dB line up there. Um, so I've got three markers. To, in fact, I've got four markers turned on. Uh, marker number one on the left hand side there, as we can see down there, is set for three point six megahertz. Um, that's my uh, lower minus 3 dB point that I'm looking at. Uh, marker number two on the right hand side there is 3.9 megahertz. 
and then at the moment uh, marker number three is the roaming one which uh, is the the, the well, ro a roaming marker between those two uh, with an outlier there of number four um, sitting at minus 32 dB which uh, at the high end is would appear to be the stop band uh, for this. Um, as we can see there the insertion loss um, is sitting at you know, the, the, the best insertion loss is about 1.4 dB uh, dropping down to 1.8 so I've got about a 0.4 dB uh, variation there across um, across that pass band um, and like I say the frequency of operation which I've been most interested in is sitting right about here um, 3.69 megs is basically where I want to be so I've got an insertion loss of uh, 1.65 uh, assuming I'm, I'm using this correctly um, so that's good, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what, what I will do is, while um, that seems to be reasonably clear, um, I'm just going to adjust the the center capacitor which is linking the two bandpass filters. And as we vary that we can see how it really impacts the, um, the response. And as we get uh, a lot more capacitance we can start to see that uh, the, the 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 bandwidth increase with that um, with that variation in the in the uh, the gain across it. So that was a but basically a bit of a tweaking with that. And then if I was now to tweak the uh, the two trim capacitors in parallel with those two inductors, if I can see what I'm doing, um, this is uh, one of them. You can sort of see that sort of shifting the whole pass pin up a little bit and down. And if I was to tweak the other one you get a sort of a similar effect. So what I essentially did, uh, and I keep saying right or wrong because I'm no expert in this, um, it was just a matter of sort of tweaking the various values to come up with um, a happy medium where uh, my th minus 3dB points were approximately the 3.6 and the 3.9 um, with a, I don't want to say maximally flat, but a, uh, a relatively flat uh, pass band um, as you can see there, roughly a 0.4 dB um, range. So, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So that was interesting. Um, for interest's sake, what I'll do now is I'll just sort of zoom back out again and uh, turn on the Nano VNA. And let me just unplug that. Let me turn that, um, that tracking generator off. Let's plug into there. Let's just plug this one into here. I'm not going to pause the video, I'll just, um, I'll just get straight into it. And let me just turn that on. So let's see if we can't zoom up on that. And I'll try and keep that as smooth as I can. Um, so sorry about the reflection there, but I can't do much about that, I'm afraid. Let me just go to recall, um, recall number four. So I've already set that one up. So what we can see there is... I'm also sweeping uh, similar to what I was doing on the um, on the uh, signal generator, sweeping in this particular case from one megs uh, through to six megs. Uh, we can certainly make all things equal there. We make the stop band there uh, five megs to make it exactly the same. Um, and as you can see there, it's. I apologise. This is not really ideal, unfortunately. Let's come back a bit. Oh, I can't do much about that. Uh, look, I, re I really, I really apologise, but I just, I just can't work out a, a good way of doing this. Um, it's a bit hard to see, but the pass band there is 1.7, and if I turn that on, I don't think it's going to do any better. Um, it's, a change, it's a shame I can't change the colour of the trace, but we can see there it's 1.7 dB, um, and then down to the marker there is uh, 3. Point, we go to 3.6. Uh, minus 3 dB there, 3.2 across the other side up to say 3.9 which is roughly there somewhere um, a, a similar figure so uh, for all intents and purposes still a really useful device this little, this little VNA and apologies that you can't see it very well but uh, the blue doesn't work too well here with the reflections but um, really um, said it many times for a, a, a very cost effective um, device this thing here it, it does a, a whole multitude of things so that's really useful and um, I'm sure if I had like I did with the main scope um, zoomed in on that then I could have actually tweeted the, um, the, the trim caps in exactly the same manner as I did on the SIGGEN 
Anyway, so that's uh, that's good. So that's um, probably all I'm going to cover off um, today. Um, again, apologies that I was a little bit sort of disjointed and a bit um, all over the place, but you know that's the way it is. So there you go. So I think the next mission now will be to when I can. Uh, the next month's going to be a, a, bit, a bit too more for me. Uh, I'll look to configure this now as a um, as a receiver because uh, all the parts are now there and have a play around with that and then debate if, uh, if and when uh, to turn it into a transceiver. Anyway, 73 is also safe, or 73 I should say, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.